Hello, I'm Rob Kellogg. Today we're going to talk about hearing protection and how you can evaluate do you really have enough hearing protection for what process that you're actually doing. So one of the things we want to look at is when we get this hearing protection, you're going to have to interpret what the NRR rating is, and that's the noise reduction rate uh, indicator. Now, if you look on the package that this uh, system comes with, whether you're using you know, earmuffs, you're using the little foamies that you roll up and throw in your ear, all of these have an NRR rating, and I'm going to teach you how to actually interpret that and then evaluate is it enough for you to actually protect yourself with the activity that you're working. And some of the parameters that we're going to have to deal with uh, while we're in the construction industry. Now this is not for general industry. General industry has a little bit more stringent requirements. We're talking about construction applications. So if you're looking at this and decide to take this on somewhere else, uh, if you're working at a factory, for example, they play a different game. So we want to make sure that we understand that we're dealing with construction applications only here. So the first thing we want you to do is, is look at that package and where it says NRR rating. How do I determine what that is? Well, I've got some calculations behind me that I'm going to walk you through so you can understand that a little bit better. So without further ado, let's get on to that. Now, your decimal calculation is a simple mathematic problem, but it's a process. You want to maintain that process to get the right results. You start mixing the process, you're going to get a different number, and that's not going to be correct for you. So as we see here, the NRR rating, we talked about the, the noise reduction rate. And you might get something on there for like a 23, 25. I'm just pulling a number out of my rear end here uh, to use to, for calculating in particular. So you can always fill that number in later. So the NRR rating minus seven. You're gonna subtract seven from that rating off the bat. And then you're gonna go ahead and then divide that result by two. So if I have a 32 NRR rating, I'm gonna take seven away from that which brings me to 25. And at 25, I'm gonna divide that by two, which is gonna give me 12.5. This is the reduction rating. Now, why we say half is because there's a human error factor that comes into play with putting hearing protection on. You might not get it all the way into your ear properly, so you have that uh, an opening, or you don't have it adjusted right, so there's like an ability for noise to bypass slightly through that hearing protection like on earmuffs. So the half is a safety factor and really that's what it is. To make sure that you're getting the true protection, we want to half that result and that's why they do that. So that's where the calculation comes from, those numbers come from. So once we have a 12.5 decibel evaluation for this 32 NRR rating material, now we're going to implement this into our environment. So, in our environment, whatever that may be, if you're working with a saw, 98 decibels is definitely something that you would have to deal with. So we're just using one simple uh, example. You can get all of these exposure mechanisms, uh, the rough decibel mechanism that they produce off the internet. All you gotta do is say, hey, what does a chainsaw decibel develop? What does it make? And it gives you a rough estimate of what that might be. If you don't have a decibel meter, uh, which probably you don't, you can actually download one on the App Store. And I have one that was uh, about $5, and it literally gets me within 0.1 accuracy. So it's pretty close, and it's close enough for what we need to do. So without having a professional like me come out with an actual calibrated mechanism to see exactly what you're getting in decibels, rough estimates going to be what you're going to need to utilize. So definitely get your information off the internet as a general information guideline. So at 98 decibels of the environment you're working in, you're going to take that 12.5 reduction with your hearing protection in and then subtract that from your 98, giving you a 90 or 85.5 roughly decibel exposure from that activity. When well, the construction industry, it means that 90 is the minimum, which is the action. You have to do something to protect yourself. So by putting this below that action level, you've actually protected yourself below the required exposure limits. Now, one of the things that you can do too to test out in the field if it's too loud is that if you can't hear a, snap, a simple snap from your fingers, nothing more than that, it's too loud. 
you need to have hearing protection put in. So if you don't have these decibel meters and you don't have the app and you don't have any other reference, uh, a simple snap test in the field tells you, hey, you need, you need to do that. So as soon as you can get that, that background noise reduced, um, the better. The sooner you do it, the better. So if you have any other further questions, uh, or one more point, is that if this actually doesn't do it, and say we have a decibel reduction, let's say we had a 22, which is definitely going to reduce it down. So 22 minus 7 is going to give us a 15. Half of 15 is 7.5. So now 7.5 from 98 definitely puts us over the 90 requirement, which means not only are we going to have to wear hearing plugs, we might have to wear muffs on top of that as well to reduce that exposure if that's not going to be uh, sufficient enough. So you have to look at your calculation according to your vi environmental exposures so that way you're doing it the correct way. Again, if you have any questions and concerns and how you apply this stuff, definitely give us a call here at Ultimate Group. We're here to help you help yourself. And remember, safety is not a mindset, it's a state of mind. Have a good day.